Okay, so today what we're going to do is a quick review of the definitions, the general kinematics definitions. They always work. It's what they mean. In fact, there's a lot of meaning in there that you can easily miss, but if you rely on the definition and always train yourself to pick up that subtlety, uh, then you'll be good. These work in general, and we're talking one-dimensional. When we do two-dimensional, then we'll do one direction, say horizontal, and another vertical, or one direction along the plane and another perpendicular to the plane. So we'll add that in. But for now, uh, we'll build on these guys. So as we know, the general one-dimensional kinematics, kinematics means describing the motion, we've got things at an instant that we need to be aware of and be able to write down and draw a picture, and things that happen over an interval of time from now to now. Um, so we can, a good notation for time, we can use the subscript E for earlier. That's kind of my subscript. It works, I think, better than INF. And L for any later time. So we could have T1 could be the earlier and T3 could be the later. Or 2 could be earlier and 3 could be later. Obviously in sequence. So that's an instant. And over an interval of time, of course, we use the delta T earlier to later, any one. So again, 2 to 3, 1 to 3, would be 1 to 3 would be T3 minus T1. Again, we don't necessarily have to write that, so don't write it. If you, don't, if you know what the time is, then it's whatever, 2.3 seconds, fine. Don't write all that, but that's what that means. A lot of books will just write T, and they mean a time interval, so be careful of that as you go on. In space, we've got position relative to some origin. How far away are you, and in what direction? We can use X for position, we can use Y for position, we can use S for position, things like that. But any of those we can subscript again with E, earlier, later, or to get, and this would be general. So I'll write some equations in general, and then you draw your picture and decide, do I want to relate state one to state five, or state one to state two, or state two to state five, and then you can make it specific. So that's what it's all about, okay? And of course the change in position is called displacement. Does it matter how I get from one place to another? Well, no. I've got the later minus the earlier. However I got there doesn't matter. My change in position is my change in position. It's where I started and where I ended. Okay, it's independent of the path. But distance does. How much exercise you get does depend on the path. There's not a simple way to write that equation. Again, I mentioned uh, you can write a line integral for that, uh, but we're not doing that now. It's often up for division. But it's how much you traveled, how, many, how much exercise you got. Okay, good. Rate of travel, instantaneous velocity can be written, again, with subscripts. We want to keep track of the states. So I call them states or moments or events. Earlier, later, so make it specific now. One, two, three, four, however it is. So if you give the velocity at an instant, what you're giving, say state two, you're giving the speed, which is always positive. And the direction, which in one dimension is defined by a plus or a minus. Plus is whichever way you choose, and minus is the other way. Okay, so that said, let's look at time. Is that always positive, or can it be negative? It's positive. And position can be positive or negative. And again, whichever way you choose. You can be to one side of the origin or the other. All right, uh, so speed is, uh, speed is positive. It's how fast you're going and directions which way. So to give the velocity, you give both of those things. We can also write this using calculus as a derivative. The velocity at state two is defined as, three lines, the derivative of x with respect to time, which is also on a graph, the slope, at that time, at that instant. You see the units are, say, meters per second, miles per hour, kilometers per minute, whatever you want. Um, but it's right there. It speaks to you. Okay. Now, if we look over an interval, there's a few definitions here. There's, there's average speed, which I chose to do first. I'll show you why. Between any two states. And all you need is how, how, what the distance is, how far you walk. One, two, three, four. I walked four steps. That's the distance. That's the exercise. And how much time? 
in that case it was zero at the start and the distance was one, two, three, four, say meters. Here, average velocity, which we can notate AVG or AVE or sometimes with a straight bar over it, however you do, between any two states is the displacement. So one, two, three, four, I'm back to the start. I didn't I have no change in position. So my average velocity there is zero because sometime I'm walking that way, say positive, and the other time I'm walking negative. Anyway, that's it. Just use that, write it, and then see where it takes you. Okay, important point. Derivatives can be written in terms of integrals. So we're going to use that here in just a moment. If I rewrite, rearrange that, it's, it's key to realize that derivatives can be evaluated at particular moments, the slope at a particular point. But an integral is done over some time span or interval, right? And that's critical. So let's see the units, meters per second times seconds. I'm going to sum that up, that product, meter per second times seconds, meters. So, oh, I must have that at being x. And, of course, that's very wrong. Uh, it's really critical throughout physics to think of this as a definite integral, which is a change in position from earlier to later. So the change is critical, and that's another way then for us to go up here and get the change. And we're going to use that in just a moment. All right, so just study it. Now, that's the rate of travel. How fast and in what direction? Okay. You can talk about it in an instant, or you can talk about the average. Also remember that these two numbers are often very, very different. And since distance is positive and that's positive, this is always positive. However, this could be positive or negative. Displacement could be positive or negative. Distance is positive. It's just how much exercise you got. Okay, cool. So now, let's talk about the next notion, uh, the next concept, the rate of change of motion, the rate at which you change your speed, or the rate at which you change your direction, or you could be doing both. Um, so that's acceleration. Now written as a derivative, we've got the acceleration, say it's state three. In order to perform this derivative, we need velocity as a function of time. Take the derivative, evaluate it at that particular time. And that's acceleration. It could be changing, but a lot of problems we'll be doing aren't. Changing, uh, it doesn't have the acceleration changing. Okay, so check in here. Good. Okay, so that's acceleration at any instant. And again, it could be zero at that instant, but it could be changing. It could be non zero, it could be positive, it could be negative. So this also is a positive or a negative number. What are the units? Meters per second per second, miles per hour per second, whatever you want, right? but the velocity units over time units. Uh, and as a reminder, meter per second divided by second is written shorthand as meter per second squared, but the meaning, meter per second per second, makes more sense. Like how much am I, say, let's say miles per hour. Miles per hour per second. How many miles per hour am I picking up every second? Or how many miles per hour am I losing every second? That's, but, you know, it's easier if you write, since we often use meter per second per second, it's easier to write that as meter per second squared to make sure you can do that algebra. So, uh, either way, think of it this way, write it this way, it's shorter. Okay, cool, and you've got that on the other video. So now, that's at an instant. What about average? Well, average is as you'd expect. You take any two moments, it's the change in velocity over the change in time. Okay, and that's what the average velocity is. But what can I do with this? How's, what's that derivative integral connection? Well, I can, you know, cheat a little bit, think of it algebraically, move the dt over. It works for physics because we have continuous functions that are differentiable. Things move uh, in continuous ways. And so I can write that as, hmm, let's see. This is equal to, I want to write an integral. 
I've got acceleration. Now I'm going to, in order to perform this, I'll need acceleration as a function of time. Someone will have to give it to me, or I'll have to write it as a model. So times dt. Remember, that's a product. So you see the units, for example, meter per second squared times seconds is meter per second. So the meaning is staring at you. Uh, remember that you're summing up that product over a time interval from some earlier time to some later time. And so that is not the velocity at a particular time. Rather, it's the change in velocity earlier to later. Now, once you write that, you know, then just take it from there. So write down what you know when you problem solve, and then take it from there and see where it goes. Okay? Um, all right, so now what we're going to do in a moment is to, uh, we're going to look at some special cases. Okay. And the special case that we use quite frequently is a case where the acceleration between the earlier and later times stays the same. It's constant. And if it's not changing, then the acceleration at any moment is the same as the average acceleration, and that's good. Uh, and that includes if the acceleration is zero and stays zero. In other words, there's no change in motion. Everybody cool with that? So we can do this actually three ways. I'm not going to do it all three. We can do it using algebra. We can do it graphically. And the way that I'm going to do it here in a moment is to use calculus. And I'm going to use sort of a shorthand quick calculus derivation that here in my class you're going to probably have to reproduce on the first exam with careful notation, okay? And so we'll do this here uh, in a moment. Before I begin, again, I want to re reinforce the concept of um, acceleration, okay? And the concept of acceleration, and uh, let's see, Alan actually asked before class, the concept of acceleration is broader than usual. Most people, when they say accelerate, they think increase speed. But in physics, what we find that's fundamental to understanding why things move the way they do is that this concept of acceleration kind of needs to be broadened. It's just the change in motion. Whenever you're changing your motion, you could increase speed, you could decrease speed. Hello, decrease speed. So any change in speed, or, of course, you could turn. So now we're broadening the use of that word. This is common. That's commonly what people mean by accelerate. We often say this is decelerate. Um, and this still does mean decelerate. If you say decelerate, that means slow down. But if you say accelerate now, in this broader sense, accelerate means to speed, increase speed or speed up, go faster. This means go slower or decrease speed. And this means turning. Now you can do it the value or amount. Keep in mind that the acceleration, the amount, you can, of course, Increase your speed slowly, gradually, and that's a small acceleration. Or you can increase your ski speed abruptly, and that would be a large number. How large is large? Well, I don't know. What, 10 meters per second squared, is that large or small? 100, is that large? Can you do that? We'll check that out and explore that in lab and things like that. So the value, the amount, you're going to try to get, become aware of and think about as you do that. I think the one best way to do that is to think about how many miles an hour do you pick up or lose every second. We'll deal with acceleration for turning after we do vectors. So uh, that's it for this segment, and we're going to go on to that derivation on the next one. <clears throat>